The team at Astro just made a huge announcement in announcing AstroDB, which is a fully managed SQL database that is ridiculously easy to use. Now, this video is just going to be a first look at how to use it. We're going to put it in production in an actual site. Now, like I mentioned, this is a SQL database. It's fully managed by Astro. It uses libsql kind of behind the scenes, so it's super lightweight. And then it actually includes the Drizzle ORM so that you get type safety and kind of the normal method you expect to work with. You don't have to write raw SQL queries to interact with your database. On top of that, the dev environment could not be easier. You literally just run your dev command and it spins up a local database for you automatically. As soon as you want to connect it, you just connect it with a remote flag, super easy to work with. Now there's a ton here, but I do want to mention that pricing is $0 to start with. You don't even have to include your credit card. And then if you want to, you get a bunch more on top of that. Now you're going to write to a specific location. So you pick a database for that. However, when it comes to actually reading, it's a distributed database, which means wherever people are, they'll get the fastest connection to the closest database to them. Now here's the actual project we're going to work on today where you save links to a database. I've done a lot of the actual work to get this scaffolded up and ready. So we're just going to focus primarily on AstroDB and on some of the functions we'll need server-side APIs essentially to interact with the database. But you can see here that I can add new links and then I can check it on or off and that data will persist as I refresh my page. I can open the link, I can delete the link and all this happens live. And again, as I refresh, everything kind of stays set. Now, Astro has done a lot of the heavy lifting here. If you've ever done something like this before, you'll know you usually have to containerize it, a bunch of other stuff. You don't have to do any of that here. It's using just a local dev database that it spins up for you that you can seed with information and then use that to build out your site. And as soon as you're ready, connect to your remote database to actually work with that live data in dev mode. Now, if you want a deeper dive in AstroDB, I do have a course called Learn Astro. I'm going to use that exact same project we're building out here, except we're going to go through it a lot more slowly and walk through all the different details here right in the sample project, which I'm recording this week. About what AstroDB and Astro Studio have to offer. So in this first look, let's just kind of get a lay of the land on how you can interact with the database, get it up and running in dev mode, and then eventually get it to production. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, let's go ahead and get started by looking at AstroDB. Now, I've got the docs open right over here and you can see that it's really easy to add it. It's like any other integration. Now we are going to do a bunch of server-side rendered stuff. So in addition to adding AstroDB, I also want to add an adapter for SSR. In my case, I'm going to add the Netlify adapter, but you can add whatever one you want to. So I'm going to do MPX, Astro Add, and then we'll do Netlify and also DB. So I'll let it install the dependencies and then I'll go ahead and let it update my config as well. And then let's get this thing back up and running. If I open over the Astro config here, you can see that it's added it right over here. And I've also got this output as server. Now it's done something else as well. And that is it's added this DB folder that has a config file where we can define different tables we want as part of the SQL database. And also a seed file where we can have local data that we're going to use. So those will be the first two things we set up. So let's go ahead and come over to the config. And all we're going to do is set up a table. And right now, I'm just going to keep this real simple. We're going to have a single thing. And since we're kind of collecting links on this site, this table will just simply have columns that are all connected to a link that I might save as a developer. So before we can export a table, I need to go up here and go ahead and define a table. So I can call it whatever I want. Let's just call it a link. And this will be define table. And I want to make sure I grab this from astro colon db, not from the node modules. And then I simply need to pass in different columns. So just like this, for each of these columns, I need a name and then whatever the column represents. So in this case, I'm going to start with an ID and I can just go ahead and pull in the column helper here from astro db dot number. This has to be a number. And then what I can do is go ahead and set this as my primary key that does a couple of things. Number one, it will automatically add this and increment it. And then number two, it is used for looking it up, especially when you're doing queries. I've got a couple other items as well, and I'll just go ahead and paste these in because they're fairly basic. All of these are just text items, a title, a URL, and a description, and then finally an is read, which is a Boolean. And I go ahead and set this as a default of false. Now I can export this table just right down here as link. So that's the config taken care of. And of course, you'd have multiple columns probably on any kind of complex project, but we're going to keep this real simple. I can come over here then, and then we're going to look at the seed. And all I want to do here is seed my local database, my dev database with some data. And the real cool thing here is Astro takes care of everything. You don't have to have some kind of Docker container just to run a local dev environment. You can just seed it with this data, and then you can work with it very much just like you would with your live production data. Now, there is actually a way to work with production data in dev, and I'll show you that later on. So over here, all we have to do is await. We just want to use the db.insert method. AstroDB includes the Drizzle ORM automatically. That way you can work with this in a type safe manner. You don't have to write raw SQL queries or inserts or all this kind of stuff. You just write kind of normal JavaScript stuff and let Drizzle handle all the rest. 
I'm going to come over here and just add a type of link. And I do need to go ahead and pull this in. So if I hit Control and Spacebar, I should be able to pull this in from AstroDB. If you don't see that, you can restart your dev server. Sometimes that might be necessary. And then I simply am going to tack on a bunch of values. This is just going to be an array of different objects. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just paste these in, because as you can see, they're just going to reflect the data schema that I have, the config. Now, I don't have to include an ID because, again, it will increment that automatically since it's the primary key. But you can see I've got a title, a URL, and a description, and then an is read property. So now we've actually got everything seeded, and we can actually use it in production. So I'm going to come over here, and you can see that it has gone ahead and restarted the local database. Sometimes you might need to do some extra work on your part, but if I jump over here to this, let's see, where am I, right here? Now I should be able to access these and display them on the home page. So let's come over here, and I'm going to open up my index.astro, and I'm going to come right inside here, and I want to await all of these from my local dev database. Now let's go ahead and grab the links, and we could just do this in the front matter here. This would be server side, obviously, or on build. So I'm going to come over here and grab my links, and then I'm just going to await this from DB. So I need to import this from Astro colon DB, and then I'm just going to select in this case. And again, Drizzle takes care of all the complex logic here. All I have to do is just say, hey, use this method and grab it from all my links. Now, of course, I can get a single one if I want to, but in this case, I'm just going to grab them all. Again, I want to hit control and spacebar and pull this in from astro colon db. So very much like working in a sense with content collections, except we can eventually write to this as well. So now that I've got that, I'm just going to come down this way and I've got con some components set up already just to make this quicker, but I'm going to grab my links. I'm going to map over each of my links and for each of these links, I'm simply going to pass this to my link card component. I've already imported this up top, but this link card, I just need to pass it a link. And this is just going to be the link, the individual link. So if I go ahead and say this, you'll notice that all of them show up right here. Now this is handled again by the link card component that just takes in the same shape over here and then outputs it down this way. Now there's also some JavaScript down here, which we'll get to a little bit later. But as you can see here, I've actually got all of them showing up and this is live from my database. Now, this all works with hot module reloading. So if I come over here to my seed and come inside here and say like my blogs or something like that and refresh, you'll notice it actually updates this live. So really, really great dev experience. And of course, I'm working with the same structure I'm going to have in production. So I know that everything is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that down and come back over this way. And the next thing I want to do is handle this add link component. So for that, I'm going to come over here and I've got a dialogue component right over here. This is just a normal HTML dialogue element. And if I come over here and click, you'll notice that it opens up and I can start to fill out all this stuff. And it should have all the same kind of structure as what my database eventually will need. If I come down here, you'll notice it's just a bunch of text and input areas. These are custom components, a checkbox as well. But again, nothing special here. It's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now down here, we've actually got a script started where I've grabbed the form and I'm basically opening and shutting the dialogue as needed. But on top of that, down this way, you'll notice that whenever I submit the form right here, we're going to prevent the default and grab all the form data. Now, this form data API is just a JavaScript API, but you'll notice we're going to sanitize it just to make sure that we're getting safe HTML from the, the user or safe strings from the user. We'll get all this down this way, and we should have on top of all the rest of those things an is red boolean, true or false. Now, I'm going to check to make sure that all these things exist, and if they do, here's where I want to actually hit my database. Now, we're using server-side rendering so that I can hit an API endpoint that's protected and I can do all this addition, all this inserting into my database from the server. I don't need any kind of special API keys or anything like that. Since it's server-side, it's protected automatically and everything just works with AstroDB. So let me come back over this way. We're going to come over to the pages directory and here's where I'm going to add a folder. We'll just call this API. Now, inside here, I'm going to have a file. We'll just call this add link dot json.ts. If you're not familiar with API routes in Astro, you can look at a video I did last week where I covered all the basic CRUD operations using these endpoints. So the first thing we're going to do is come inside here and export a const called post, and it needs to be all caps. This tells this that it can only receive post requests. Now I do get a little helper here called API route from Astro. This will just ensure I return an actual response and everything is as it should be. Now inside here, I get a request. This request property should include a lot of things, but it will especially include the body that I pass along with my post request. Now inside here, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, let's go ahead and get that body. We're just going to wait this from our request.json. Now next, let's go ahead and set up a basic try catch. So we've got a try, we've got a catch. And that way we can handle errors if they come and just catch them down below. Now, the first thing I want to do is extract out all those points from the data. So the title, the description, the URL, and the is read. 
And then let's go ahead and check that they exist. I'm just gonna paste a lot of these in to speed us up a little bit because I'm really just trying to overview the concepts here. Then I'm gonna to check to make sure that they exist. I could also check what type they are as well. And then for the Boolean, obviously if I just check if it exists and if it's false, it'll throw an error here. So I just wanna check that it is of a type Boolean. And if it's not, then I'll go ahead and just return a response here where I say it's failed and the, six, the status is 404 and I tell it what the message is. Okay, so assuming now I've got a title description URL and I've got a Boolean for is red, I can now go ahead and hit my database. So let's come inside here and I'm just going to request here from my database. So astro.db, I also need to grab the link right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this sanitize HTML I think this is actually called sanitize, yeah. So from the sanitize HTML package, I've got a sanitize helper that will do the same thing we're eventually gonna see on the front end, where it will sanitize those inputs in case somebody hits this endpoint where they didn't come from you know, the code that I wrote. Now, assuming that I get back a positive response, let's go ahead and just say, let's return a successful response where we'll send back the data, a success message, and then the message that says success and a status 200. Otherwise, we'll throw a new error. Now in this catch block down here, let's go ahead and just console log it and then return this error string right here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense what we did. I know we did that kind of quickly, but I'll leave the code so that you can look at it as well. So now that we've got this endpoint, we should be able to come over here to our dialog. Now we're already inside of a try right here, and then we're gonna catch any errors down this way, which means right here, we can just hit that endpoint, right? Add link.json. So I'm just gonna call this request, and we'll just await the fetch. And here we're just gonna hit our API slash add link.json. Now remember, this has to be a post request because that's the only one we have set up on that route. So the method here will be of type post, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and include some headers here, and then also I have to include a body when I hit the post. And it needs to include all those things, the title, the description, the URL, and the is read. Now, this whole thing right here, I should get back a response, right? The response will be from my API endpoint that has already gone out and updated the database. In this case, it'll be the dev database, which is our like seed database, and eventually it will be the production database. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract off of this success, the data that we get back and the message. I don't know which one of these we'll use right now, but let's just await this from res.json or request.json like this. And I need to go ahead and destructure these like this. Okay, so I should get these back. And now I can just check off that success property. So if success is here, I wanna do a few things. Now the way I have this set up, I just wanna grab the form and reset all the values. I've already got this as a query selector for add form. So I can just use the reset property that's built in. The next thing I wanna do is close the dialog. Once again, there's a method for this. So I can just dialog.close. And then we could do this a couple of different ways, but for now we're just gonna take our location and just reload it so that our data will refresh as well. And then if it's not success, let's just go ahead and throw a new error where I'll actually pass along the message, whatever that happens to be. And it should be caught down here and just throw an alert right here. Okay, so that means if we did everything correctly, since we're using server-side rendering, it should hit this and allow it to do a post route where it will then hit my database and add an extra entry. So let's come over here and just double check. So I could have like a title right here, description, and then this URL, I have it set up where you have to start it with HTTPS colon double slash just to kind of keep it safe. So we'll say like google.com or something like that. I can check is red or not. Let's just go ahead and add the link though. You'll notice that it's added right away, reloaded the page, and then went ahead and pulled this in right here. So cool, so we got this working just like we'd expect. If I refresh, that database persists. If I restart my dev server, it would just go back to the ones that I seeded originally. So that's the first thing done. Now we do need to go ahead and add a couple of other things. We're gonna have an update, so a patch right here where we can check this on or off. Obviously the UI updates, but what I want to update is the actual database, right? So I want it to actually trigger that as either true or false for this particular one right here. And the same thing here, if I click this, I want it to actually delete it, right? Now it may look like it deleted it, but that's just because they got the UI doing that. So let's go ahead and open that up. That's the card component. Now we could do either of these, but let's go ahead and just start with this delete right here. If we come all the way down this way, you're gonna see that I've got a delete right here, where we've got a data attribute of data delete on it. And then we've got an ID, which we will use to look up that particular item in our database. So now down this way, I've got a script tag already written where we've got all the delete buttons right here, anything with a data delete. Then inside here, we have an event listener that will listen for a click on any of those and then grab the ID off of it. Now notice it's deleting the actual article. So it's going up the chain in the HTML and just deleting this off the page. And whenever I refresh the page, obviously it will actually be gone as well. But in the UI, it at least updates. What we wanna do is make sure that when we hit this, it actually goes out and dynamically selects that item and deletes it. Now this is actually fairly easy to do with these API routes. I can have a dynamic route right over here We'll just call it ID like this in brackets dot JSON dot TS. Now the brackets tell it that this is a dynamic route. In this case, it's a dynamic API route, but either way, it's a dynamic route. 
So what I need to do is have a delete endpoint that when I hit this, again, in server-side rendered mode, it can actually look up that item in my database, all server-side safely, delete it, and then return a response to me. So once again, we're going to export a function, and this needs to be called delete, all uppercase like this. And again, we have got a helper here for our API route like this from Astro because I'm using TypeScript here. Now, this needs to be an async function. We're just going to go ahead and grab the params here in this case because I want to know the parameter of that ID that has been passed in. That would be this right here. So the first thing let's do is let's go ahead and grab that right here. We'll just make sure that it's of a type number because that's what I'm going to look up in my database. So I'm going to convert it to a number. Now, this may not exist. So let's first of all just check that it does. If it doesn't, we'll just return a failed response. Assuming then that we do have this, let's go ahead and set up another little try catch. So I've got a catch right here. We've got our catch. Let's go ahead and come into the try. The first thing I want to do is hit my database, right? And in this case, I can just go ahead and grab the database and use the delete method. Again, this is what Jurzel gives me. And I'll grab my link and say I want to look up on the links where, and then I can use these little helpers here. So I can say anything that equals with a link.id, so out of all my links possible, matches the ID, that's the param that I passed in. This is why I need it to be a number because they need to be the same type, right? So assuming that that is the case, it will return this to me successfully and delete that item out of my database. And if that's true, then I can just say, hey, we're successful right here. We've gone ahead and we've deleted it. Otherwise, we'll just say, hey, there's been a prop bob, all right, or whatever else you'd want to say there. And then down here, let's just go ahead and console log it and then also return an error here with whatever error we've passed along, which will be prob bob, which is not very helpful, but that's okay. Okay, so that should be set up and ready to go. So that's the backend logic. Let's now jump over here to the link card. We're inside here, we're going to do the same kind of idea right here. So there's more robust ways to do this. Like we'd probably want to capture this in a variable and check to make sure that it status to a four came back and all that. But for right now, let's just do a real simple one where we fetch here our API. And we want this to be dynamic because we're going to select the ID. Now the ID you might remember was right here. Whatever the data ID was, that should be the thing we're selecting. And I'm going to hit .json right here. And then once again, this needs to be a method where the type is delete because I want to hit that delete endpoint in particular. Our header should be the exact same and we should be set there. And just to make sure we can actually see that something's happening, let's console log here like uh, deleted or something like that. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here and open up my console down this way. And I'm going to delete this right here. And it should actually hit that dynamic endpoint right here, delete the individual item here. And obviously it's going to also just remove it from the DOM. But I really want to make sure that it's actually done it when we refresh the page. So I'm going to click this. It should remove it. And it says deleted, so this is good, right? That means something probably happened. If I refresh, it is truly gone. So really, really cool. We're actually using that dynamic endpoint to delete an individual item. Now we can do very much the same thing here with these is red properties. Obviously the UI is going to update because this is just a checkbox or a little bit of a special one, but it's basically a checkbox here. What I want to do is check whether or not it is red and then hit my endpoint, another dynamic endpoint, where I patch the actual item in my database. So let's actually come and use the same exact one because we're going to use something very similar, not a delete, but in this case, I want to hit a patch. So let's come inside here. We're going to export a const called patch, again, all uppercase. And again, we're going to use the API route. And this will be an async request. And here we want two things. We want both the params and the request because we actually have a body we're passing on here as well eventually because I need to actually pass along whether or not it's true or false. And that I would do in the actual body. So inside here, the first thing we're going to do is just extract the one thing we would have passed on in the body, which is the is red property, again, from await request.json. Secondly, I need to grab the ID. This would be from the params ID, very much like we did with the delete function as well. Now, if there is no ID, we're going to do the same thing we did before, where we just return this response. It's an error. Otherwise, I want to do another try catch. So we'll come in here, grab a catch. And first of all, in the try here, we're simply going to hit our database. Now notice here, I've already pulled in the database and the link and the EQ, so I don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. All I'm going to do though is update an individual item. I'm going to set the item is red to whatever I passed in here. So is red equals is red is what I'm doing here, but shorthand in JavaScript, you don't have to do that. And I'm going to do that where the link ID equals the ID. So same kind of lookup here. Now, if I get back a positive response, I'm going to send back this positive response. Otherwise, I will throw another useless error and then let's catch this down this way. So same basic thing, except all we're doing is doing this instead of the delete function, right? Uh, I guess we also had to grab the is red property, but that means I should be able to come over here. We're going to do very much the same thing here, except in this case, I need to actually pass along a body. So slightly different than what we did with the delete function. So let's go ahead once again and just fetch, and this needs to be dynamic. Once again, our API, and then it will be my ID, same kind of thing we did before, dot JSON. Now, once again, we've got a method here we've got to pass along, and this would be patch, all uppercase. 
And then we'll go ahead and send along some headers to make sure it's of type application JSON. And finally, we've got our body. Now, this will just be stringifying the is red, which will be true or false. And that's actually what we're picking off if I come back over here, right here, right? We're just saying, is this true or false? Now, I should get back a response, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and console log here just to make sure, hey, I've actually updated it. Now, the UI is already taken care of because of the checkbox, but now if I come over here and I check this right here, you'll see it says updated. That's a good sign. If I refresh, it is actually updated. So really, really cool. We've got full CRUD operations with a database that's actually live and operational. Now, each of these links are just normal links. This is obviously checking on and off. This is deleting items, and I refresh. Everything stays in state. Now, once again, if I were to come over here and kill this and then restart it npm run dev, it's going to use my seed data because now that local dev database is all gone. So there it is. That's my seed data to start with. But now if I uncheck this, you'll notice it does update it and I can refresh and we're set and ready to go. Now, AstroDB is just local. You can host this anywhere you want. But Astro does provide a product that has a really generous free tier called Astro Studio. And that's what I want to look at next. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and push this up to a Git repository and then I'll be right back with you. All right, I've gone ahead and pushed it up right over here. So I've got it in GitHub, and that will allow me to quickly access this in Astro Studio. Now you access studio at studio.astro.build, and then I'm just going to go ahead and continue with GitHub, and that way I can link it to my GitHub account. So perfect. Next thing I want to do is start a project. So I'm going to come over here and click Start a Project, and we're just going to import this from my GitHub repo. Now as it finds stuff right here, this is the last one we did, so that'll work just fine. And I'm in the West, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now this region here is just for where you're writing data. When you're reading data, it's distributed, so it'll be fast for anyone no matter where they're at. Let's go ahead and click Create New Project. And it's going to create the databases, configure the GitHub repo, which will actually set up a GitHub action for me automatically, and then make sure that this is successful. And like all good things, we get confetti at the end. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and hit Continue. And right now, you'll see that we've got this zero tables, primary database, nothing's going on here yet. If I jump back over here, you're going to notice that I actually now have a GitHub action that it's added for me automatically right here. Now, this GitHub action, you can manually set up yourself if you want to, but all it's doing is basically pushing everything to my database. So any changes that I then commit to my code will be pushed automatically to Astro Studio. Now, that does mean I need to come over here and first of all, go ahead and sync these changes to pull that down. And if I come over here, you're going to notice that now I've got this .github folder with this studio YAML file, and this is where all that magic is happening. Okay, so I've got it all connected. Well, kind of connected. What I want to do now is use the CLI, and you can do this in a couple of different ways, but I want to use the CLI to connect with this database right here. So I'm going to come down this way. We're going to do a few things. First of all, I'm going to do npm run astro, and we're going to do log in. This will log us in using the CLI. The next thing I want to do is link this individual one to the actual Astro DB first look right over here, the one in Astro Studio. So I can do that again with npm run Astro. In this case, I would just want to do link. Now, since I've already logged in, it can actually look it up and say, do you want to link this? Yes, it's an existing project. Is that what it's called? Yes, it is. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and come over this way, and let's look at the documentation to see some of the other options available to us in Studio. We've gone ahead and added this to the web UI. We've also linked it here locally in our project. Notice here, if we want to, we can manually push our table schemes. That GitHub CI action that was created for us automatically should do that. So every time we push and commit stuff to our Git repository, it will actually see those and update our remote database. So that's one thing we could do. Now, if you want to, you can actually push your data, so your seed file, all this data to kind of pre-populate your database as well. And you can do that with this uh, exec command right here. Now, as I come down this way, what we're going to want to do is actually build this using uh, a remote build. So in other words, don't use my local database. Go ahead and use the remote database in Astro Studio. Now, you have to obviously be connected to Astro Studio, which we've already done at this point. And I'm going to use this remote command right here because what we want to do is develop in dev mode using our production database. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's go ahead and come over this way. And I'm going to add this to my package.json file. In fact, I think I already did just as a sample. So we're going to use the dev db command instead of the dev command. So let's go ahead and come in here. We'll just do npm run, and this will be dev db. So as I run this, what it's going to do is connect to my remote database instead of my local database. So it won't spin up a local one. It's going to use the remote one right here connected to the remote database. So if I come over here, we should have nothing on the page right here because I have nothing in my database right over here. However, as soon as I add something, so let's add a link, like cool link, something else, all right? And then some kind of link right here. We'll say that it is red, and then we'll do add link. Now, as soon as I add this, it's going to actually add it to my remote database. So here it is right here in my remote database. So I'm actually connected 
to my live production database. Obviously, you want to be careful doing this in dev mode, but I just want to make sure that it actually works. And usually, you do this just to read it to make sure everything's working properly. But now you can see that I can delete this. I can check it as read or not read. If I come back over here, it should now eventually say, if I can move over this way, it is not read. And let's go ahead and toggle that one more time just to see the magic happen. And it should say true. All right, perfect. So it's actually working live in production. If I delete this, it should delete it from my production database. And obviously, you just got to be careful working with a remote database in, in dev mode. All right, let's come back over here and look at a couple of other things. Now, if you come down this way, you'll notice that there's some integrations that can be built. There's not a lot right now since this is brand new, but I'm really excited to see what people come up with here as well. Now, down this way, you'll notice here that uh, there is type safe integration for everything. And this is because it's using Drizzle and it, you get the standard things like text and all that kind of stuff, but it'll actually know what's available to you. And you might remember that if I were to come over here and show you kind of how I built this out. So if I come over here and we've got the link coming in right here, if I go ahead and check what this is, like link dot, you'll see that I get all this here. Now, in this particular file, it's because I've actually listed off the props here. I don't actually know if there's a way to steal the props from your schema or not and kind of insert it. So that's something I need to figure out. But again, I'm just kind of just getting my mind around here. But if I were to come inside here and link over this as well, or loop over this, so grab my links.map, for each link, we're just going to go ahead and grab a paragraph here where we're going to have the link dot and then whatever it happens to be, you'll notice it actually gives me type safety for all this as well. And this is coming directly from the database. And that's because Drizzle gives us all this typing out of the box. So really, really helpful to have all that. So this is how it actually works in production. Now, one final thing, and that would be how do you actually use this when you want to go ahead and build? Well, as I understand it, you come over here and you're going to use this astro build dash dash remote. So what I'm going to do is come over here and change my build command here to be astro build remote, which means I want it to use my remote database. Now, the way I've set this up, it's using Netlify. So I push it up to Netlify, but obviously Netlify needs to have access to be able to interact with that database as well. If I come back over this way and you look underneath settings, you'll see that I've got a bunch of different things. The one I want to look at is my tokens. So if I come inside token here, I can actually generate an app token and use this in Netlify. So I'd actually give this to Netlify and it would be able to use this to connect to my database. I, I need to provide this, so let's say like Netlify CLI or something like that. And then we'll go ahead and generate this. Now I'm only going to see this once. So I would copy this and then after that it would be gone. All right. Now, obviously I'm going to delete this by the time you see this. So you won't have to, uh, you know, you can try to use it if you want, but it'll, it'll be all gone. Then what I would do is go over to either using the Netlify CLI or in the dashboard and actually add that as an environmental variable. If I come over here, they will tell you how to do that. And let's see, right here, let's look at this deploy. You'll notice that this is how I need to change it. That's the first thing we need to do. We created a studio app token. We need to name it this right here. So in the Netlify CLI, I would just add it as astro underscore studio underscore app underscore token, and then add that token that I just copied in. And now all my serverless functions and anything server side that interacts with the database will have access to everything through this Astro Studio app token. And again, because I'm using an actual adapter for Astro, it knows to look for that and it will then use that in production. Now, this is actually what's happened right here in my GitHub workflow. In fact, if I jump back over this way, you'll see that. So upside here, right here, it's gone ahead and pulled this in right here and it's using this as well and it's added this in GitHub for me automatically. So it's the same kind of thing just on your depl deployment platform. So that's a very early first look at AstroDB and Astro Studio. If you're interested more in it, I am going to cover it in my course. In fact, I've got it planned for this right here, the sample project that is almost done being shot and it will look exactly like what we have. All right, except we're going to have a little bit more dynamicness with it. We'll probably also query it a little bit differently just to kind of start playing around with the different SQL queries you can do through Drizzle. Well, if you can't tell, I'm really excited about AstroDB and Astro Studio. As a primarily front-end developer, it's really nice to have such a great dev experience for working with an actual database. Plus, I get to write in TypeScript using the Drizzle ORM, and I don't have to do any setup for this. It's just baked in by default. If you're interested in more videos on AstroDB, let me know in the comments. I'm sure I'll be coming out with bigger projects, certainly on my course, but even here live and free on YouTube as well. But let me know in the comments below what you're interested in, what intrigues you about AstroDB, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.